Hey guys, welcome back. This is the beautiful Easter wreath we're gonna make today, and these are the supplies we'll use. A grapevine wreath form from Hobby Lobby, some lilies from Michaels, a cross and palm leaves from Hobby Lobby, some ribbons, Waverly antique wax, and you'll really be amazed at what we do with that auto detailing sponge, so stick around, because it's a cool hack. We'll start with this wreath and Yep, I paid $8.99 for it at Hobby Lobby because they don't have their 40% off coupon anymore. We'll start with separating our flowers and just getting each individual stem cut off of the bundle. And I always just slide all the greenery up to the top because it's a subtle thing, but it does show some more texture and some color once we add it to the wreath. I always recommend you take these grapevine wreath forms and kind of inspect them. Find the way you want them to go, which way up, which way down, what's the front, what's the back. Because they're always going to have some little imperfections. And that's where the whole wrap ended there. And then we'll turn it over and there's a little imperfection there on the bottom. But you just know where those are so that you'll know that what you're making is going to cover it. So I loved the way this turned out so much in this oval wreath form is so pretty. I started thinking maybe I'll never make a round wreath again. And then I pulled up a picture of my last round He Is Risen wreath. And I thought, well, no, that's gorgeous too. So let me know in the comments below, do you prefer the oval one or the round one? Or do we just not have to make that choice? Now I had it laying out on the table just to do a rough, this is where all the parts are gonna go. And then I put a little hanger on it and put it on my tripod, which really isn't a tripod, it is a, an easel for painting but it works perfect for this. And then you just start putting everything in. And I love these large palm leaves from Hobby Lobby. I think they come in a pack of four for $6.99, but then you get 40% off. But they just add so much to a, an Easter wreath like this. And I'm using wire to attach them. I just put the stems inside the wreath form and then use wire to kind of secure them. And I know in another video I've talked about, I don't like using wire, but in this case, and especially with a grapevine wreath form, it just really helps to secure it. And here I'm placing in the top palm leaf and using a piece of wire to secure that. And I, I show probably more than I should on, on this video because I want you to see that it, it does take a little bit of time None of it's hard, but it does take some time. I know I watch a lot of videos and you think, wow, they just zip right through that. How easy and how simple and quick it must be. But it's not always. I literally had almost two hours of video shooting to make this wreath and I consolidated into about a 12 minute video. So things don't just always zip, 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 get done. And I think it's important for people to see that. And you have your people who want to kind of work along with you as you're doing it and pause the video and catch up with you. And then you have your people who just want to see what are the steps and let me go. So I am going to make an overview video. So this one's about 12 or 13 minutes. I'm going to make one that's about three or four minutes. That's just here are the steps now take off. And I do use wire on these because the stems you can see and the little piece that holds the leaves on, they are plastic. So if you use too much hot glue, then it's gonna melt that. So if you use the wire and just tack it with a little hot glue, it's gonna be better and it's gonna hold it securely in place. And this would be a good opportunity to thank you guys for watching. And I hope you do pick up some tricks you can use. And if you do enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. And at my last video, I said there were 14 subscribers on the channel, and at the time of recording this audio, I have 95. That's like, in less than two weeks, it increased from 14 to 95, and thank you guys so much for that. Because subscriptions, and giving it a like, and making a comment, that's what helps the channel to grow, and I really appreciate that. And ultimately, we'll end up with seven lilies on the top part, and then we'll go to the bottom part and put seven as well because you really wanna work in odd numbers because there's something that's just more visually appealing about that. And so like I say, you'll just put your seven on the top, seven on the bottom, leave a little gap, about a two or three inch gap for your bow, and then you'll be ready to move on. 
Now we just check to make sure our cross and our sign are the right place. And in a previous video, I did show you how I attach my pipe cleaners to my signs, and in this case, the cross. I just put down a strip of hot glue, put the pipe cleaner, a little more hot glue, and then put a piece of duct tape over that. And that just helps to secure it. And then just wrap it around the back here. I thought I would include this little clip. It's from the other video, but I just wanted to show you in case you hadn't seen that video, that this is how I attach the pipe cleaners to the back of a sign. This particular sign is a camper that went on a spring wreath I made. It's so super cute too. And it's a very unique method. So if you didn't catch that video, I will link it down below and you can go check that out. And now we're back to this one. And I did make that bow off camera as well. And I do have a video where I compare the bow makers that are out there, the Easy Bow Maker, Bow Dabra, and the Bow It All. And you can catch that video. I'll also link that down below. But you can see how to make bows. Because I don't think every video I need to show you how to make a bow when I have like an ultimate bow making video. <laughs> that might be a little overstated. I don't know if it's the ultimate bow making video, but it does show you how to make some good basic bows using the tools that I showed you. I'm also thinking of creating my own that makes it a little more simple because I have a lot of people that talk about how they don't like making bows. Which brings us to the auto detailing sponge from Dollar Tree. I like to cut it up and use it to paint because I know they have sponge brushes, they even have them at Dollar Tree, but I don't like the ones at Dollar Tree because they're very soft. And then if you buy them at other places, they're about 25 cents a piece. And I am a lazy crafter, so I am not going to clean out a sponge brush. I'm just going to throw it away. So this way, if I cut up those sponges, I can get about 20 of them and they end up costing about a nickel as opposed to at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, the sponge brushes that I like are about 25 cents a piece. So I'd much rather throw away a nickel than throw away a quarter. And this is the Waverly Antique Wax. And if you just put it on some raw wood, it looks like you stained it. That's a hack everybody does, so that's nothing special, but it is my favorite way to make things look stained now. Be sure and get your edges because you don't want to get it stuck on the sign and then be like, oh, look, I didn't stain the edges. Now I get the He Is Risen part from this Easter section from Hobby Lobby. And I do use this cross occasionally, but I often dissect it and use the parts in different things. Now, it has little rivets in it. And those little rivets I'll show you here. If you don't put them back, then it's like there's little black holes and I don't like that. So I pop the little heads of those rib rivets off. Be sure and cover it because they're going to go ping and you will never find it. Well, you might, but I would never find it. Now we'll just use a little hot glue and attach this He Has Risen sign to our wood sign. And another pro tip coming up, always have different types of glue within an arm's reach. Because I almost used hot glue on here but those little black holes are smaller than the tip on my glue gun, so it would have created a mess. And so I just ended up using this super glue gel from the Dollar Tree, and it worked out perfectly. Now the second pro tip about this is use the right tool for the job. Those little tiny rivet heads, man, they're just lost in my big bumbly fingers. So use those little tiny tweezers and get them put down in there. Okay, so the tweezers aren't actually tiny, they're just used when you're dealing and working with tiny things. And I did just hot glue this directly to this, the wreath form because I think there are enough points of contact that it's going to hold. Now this is a good part because we get to add some more pretties to it. And this window pane ribbon is gorgeous. Now ultimately I will cut those ends to an angle, but I just thought the white on white there was, was 
too much so I ended up adding in some of the brown ribbon I would say burlap ribbon but it's really not burlap it's a fabric it's just brown kind of gives you that burlap feel but it looks great and I'll end up putting in a few loops of that window pane ribbon and it actually came from Michaels it's in their celebrate it section and it says it's jute so whatever but it's pretty I think it adds a lot of texture and dimension and then just kind of tack it in so that it stays in place and as always more fluffing on the bow <laughs> but if you made it this far guys thank you so very much and I'm gonna try something new here I'm gonna put a black screen and see if I can't make the little cards that will take you to other videos but I won't know until I upload this video and get to YouTube so if it's just 20 seconds of a black screen I'm very very sorry but if I figure it out that will be awesome and again thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next video